And good evening and welcome to the Division II Northern Section Championship game live from Chico State University alongside Thomas Conroy. I am Ben Schneider getting you ready for Pleasant Valley Vikings 24 and 2, the number one seed taking on the number two seed, the Chico Panthers at 16 and 4. Let me get to your starters as we're getting ready to rock and roll here. Tabby Anderson, a senior. Laney Nelson, a junior. Jessica Galloway, a junior. Morgan Nedvid, a senior and Tia Barber those are your starters for the number one seed Pleasant Valley moving right to left in the home whites with the Carolina blue trim for Chico the Panthers 16 and 4 the designated road team in the all red with the yellow numbers and letters Desi McKinney a junior Stephanie or Ovitz a junior Nina Holmes a junior Jordan Moots a senior and uh, Maury Thomas, a junior. So those are your 10 starters brought to you by CIFNorthern.tv. Chico moving left to right, opening possession for the Panthers. Three ball, cash! Straight off the bat from downtown, Jordan Moots gives Chico a 3-0 lead. Yeah, she didn't need to warm up at all. She got right into it. Nice three shot. Pleasant Valley led by Denny Varley. This is his second stint as the girls coach. Did five years, and this is his fifth year on his second stint. Not to mention he coached the boys team for 25 years. <laughs> so he's been a head coach at Pleasant Valley, the Vikings, for 35 total years. He's part of the furniture. He's, no a, doubt. Le he's a legend. Chico moving left to right with a 3-0 lead. Oh, somebody's got to pick up down low. Nice power move. Doesn't fall, Vikings get the rebound, looking for their first bucket of the game. They're 24 and two on the year. They defeated Red Bluff to reach this game. For Chico, they defeated Shasta. Swing it around the perimeter. It's Anderson. Good, hard drive with the left-handed scoop shot, no good. Chico looks to push, they got numbers if they hurry. Four on one, Brewing. Oh, nice move, oh, down on the block. And Moots with five quick points. And now we got the player side of the scoreboard working for this game. So that's nice. We can track who scores what, how many fouls, who's got how many fouls, and all that good stuff. For get some reason, that didn't work the last couple games. Excuse me, Ben. Getting back to that Panthers uh, possession, I love the way Nino Holmes handled that, that. The ball, bringing it up court, made a great decision on Moose on the baseline. Nice bounce pass, allowed her to go right to the goal and keep those defense off of her for that easy bucket. And Moots is still a good six, seven feet away from the hoop. All you need is that one power dribble and go up strong. Yep. Six seventeen to go. Chico on top, five to nothing. Pleasant Valley now with the ball. It's Anderson up top. Here's a three ball front of the rim, no, by Nedvid. Moots with a great rebound there, great position. Chris Ardry, the coach for Chico in his second season. He's only got 33 more to go to, ca to, to, co <laughs> to catch Coach Varley. Long rebound, second opportunity for Chico. Eight footer, right baseline is an air ball. And Pleasant Valley still looking for their first basket. Uh, D2 boys are nightcap Chico versus Shasta. The crowd's still filing in here to watch the home team, Chico, take on the visitors, Pleasant Valley. Here's a Ooh, good defense, three ball, long range. Swish! From downtown, Tabby Anderson. Great setup on her shot there to make that easy jumper. Here about an answer, nothing but air. Good offensive rebound, weak side, go up strong. And look who else, it's Coop Moots. Yeah, Jordan Moots, 5'9", really making a presence underneath the basket. Oh, here's a steal away from the ball. I, I, I only meant home team as in, because it's the city that they're in. That's what I meant by that, uh, by uh, Chico. The lower seed, so they're the visiting team, but they should get some good crowd being that their high school just right down the street from Chico State here. So Vikings in the home whites, trailing seven to three. Chico has come out with a lot of fire here early on. That's a kick ball, and uh, that is gonna reset the shot clock to 30. 
Yeah, Holmes trying to anticipate, used her legs, so she could grab a, maybe the, the, her hand on the ball, but her foot got involved. Inbounds play is not a good one. Chico comes up with the turnover. So, sloppy start for Pleasant Valley. Here's the girl of the hour, Moons. Pick it up top. It's Thomas. Thomas threw it away. Yeah, Mr. Reddit, she thought Moose was going to stay in the box, but she moved the cross into the lane, and that allowed for the turnover. Here's Anderson, a senior, just five foot four, good ball handler. High post, and yeah, turn and face and shoot. That's Galloway. You run that play. If, if the cutter's not there and the de defense doesn't pick up on you, you got a 10 foot shot. And Galloway, here's a three top of the key. Ring it up. Well, it's a turnover to last possession. Thomas regained, regained herself by getting a nice three top of the key. Maury Thomas from downtown 10-5. So Chico shooting lights out here early on. Three of their five starters have scored. Now make that just two. Just Moots and Thomas accounted for all 10. We've got a first sub of the game for Pleasant Valley. It is Whitburn, and she will replace Barber. Here's Anderson, throw it to the right wing to Nelson. Nelson up top to Nedvid, back to Nelson. Oh, Anderson, nice cut, scoop shot, good. Oh, you love that from a guard coming across the lane to get that easy shot as he keeps the big defenders flat-footed for a moment. When you're 5'4", you gotta get that shot up quick before the shot blockers can come over. Great job by Anderson, great court awareness. How about a three from the corner to answer? Back rim, offensive rebound, oh, good idea. That was the right idea but just a little bit too high. So good ball game here early on. Yeah, Holmes had meter right down low, or excuse me, she had Ordvitz down low and she missed the, uh, missed the pass, but I like, I like to read. 10-7, Chico on top. Straight, straight up man to man. Vikings getting their motion offense. One dribble, oh good pump fake, oh ooh. Maybe a little bit of a travel, but oh. <laughs> How about Anderson, five foot four. Squeaky clean, back-to-back -back buckets, 10-9. We've had some slow starts today, but not in this one. Both teams executing great on offense. Here's a little jumper, left wing, or right wing. No, good hustle for the rebound. Save to Chico. Kick it back up top, pump fake, and just moved before. We've seen that call a lot. And the travel, 2.33 left to go. And it can get a little confusing because Pleasant Valley, actually, the home team, but it says Chico on the scoreboard, so <laughs> it could get a little confusing, but good thing we're on our A game here. And we'll take a break in the action. 2.33 to go. Pleasant Valley on top by one. You're listening to the Division II Girls Northern Section Championship game here on CIFNorthern.tv, your home for high school sports in the Northern Section. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. You can also buy a DVD or a Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFNorthern.tv. Simply click on Buy DVD and you can order tonight's game right now. So have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFNorthern.tv. And in the early going, a couple of hot scorers here. Tabby Anderson and Jordan Moods there. Each of them with seven points to lead their teams. And it really, I like the way Tabby Anderson's really cutting into the lane and using her, her, her quickness to get an open shot. And she's crafty. And Pleasant Valley can take their first lead of the game. And good cut. Ooh. No call. I like it. I mean, let the players play. 11-10. So the Vikings do get their first lead of the game. Now Chico has to answer. Ooh, dangerous cross-court pass there. And another one. You can only do that so far before it catches up to you. Throw it to the post, here's a three ball for the lead. No, draws nothing but glass. And so now the Vikings, a one point lead, looking to add to it. There's a turnover, oh, somehow it ended up in the hands of Galloway, I don't know how. Right place at the right time, I guess. And she looked up and saw the ball in the lane all alone, she grabbed it. And she drew the foul, I like that. First foul on McKinney right there for the Panthers. And Galloway to the line. Hopefully she realized she got to tie those shoes. Back rim, <laughs> the lace is hanging down. It's first sub for Chico. It's gonna be, I'm trying to see the number. 
13, Jessica Seibel will replace Nina Holmes. So Seibel seeing her first action. Second one's good. 12-10. Well, Chico got off to a quick start and they've struggled from the field the last couple possessions to see if they can tie this thing up, maybe even take the lead with a three. Good defense by the Vikings. Oh, and it's gonna say it's gonna go off of the Panthers. So Vikings ball, two point lead with 143 left to go here in the Division II section title game. And there's that travel again. We've seen that how many times this weekend? Just players just Countless. trying to make that move before they take the dribble. Yeah, and every every referee crew that we've seen have called it consistently. It's a great job on their part. Chico, student section filing in. They brought the band here. We haven't had a band all weekend. That come, might be kind of fun yeah. atmosphere, but <laughs> they're not. They're just they're kind of they're just goofing around up there. There's a turnover. Maybe a little halftime entertainment. Anderson for the Nelson, back to Anderson. 15 to shoot. Oh, good cut by Anderson. Oh, look at this move, but missed. And there's a travel. Yeah, I, I like Whitburn's reaction, but again, move the feet. And they're gonna call it each and every time. Sub for Pleasant Valley is Francesca Bonacorsi. And she replaced uh, Jess Linton. No, correction, she replaces uh, Morgan Nedvid. Chico in the motion offense, here's a three. Back rim, fight for the rebound. Goes to the Vikings. Nice play by Galloway, got good position. Took away that rebound from the Panther. Look at Anderson, dribble drive, 45 seconds left. Kick it back out to Anderson. Look at Anderson, fearless, going to the rack. Yeah, she's feeling it right now, Tabby Anderson. And she draws another foul, so she'll be going back to the foul line. She already made one from the charity stripe. Just like her court sense, Ben, she really doesn't know exactly what she wants to do with the basketball. I wonder if she knows she gets 10 seconds there at the foul line. <laughs> <laughs> she's quick to get that one up. A little bit more time. This takes a little bit more time, but still misses. Offensive rebound and going up and getting fouled is Galloway. Great move by Galloway. Slipped around the defender, Moots, and got good position on her. Got the rebound, went back up, and they called the foul on Mari Thomas coming over the lane. That's her second. And that one's so swish. Excuse me, Thomas's first. So Galloway has four first quarter points. And Chico's been on 10 for a while now, trailing 13 to 10. Second free throw's good. So 14-10 and a little backcourt pressure here. About a two second differential shot clock, game clock. Shot clock reads 25. How about the steal by Anderson? She's gonna go coast to coast. And lays it up and in, 16-10. Yeah, she had the numbers and the advantage. Nicely done by Anderson. Well, Anderson, the you know, block's called. Anderson's got nine points here in the first. A couple of steals, couple of assists. Making an early candidate for our CIF Northern.TV post-game player of the game. We will do an interview following tonight's game. Wrap this one up, get you ready for the D2 boys game. Chico versus Shasta for the nightcap. Chico needs a bucket here. Yeah, Pleasantville is on 11-0 run. Count it. Nice move there from Moots, and it's been a Moots show for Chico. Yeah, like that move. Cut across the lane, set herself up. Just a little short jumper off glass but got the defender up in the air to draw that foul. Nicely done. She's got nine of the Chico 12 points, make that 10 of 13. 3.9, Vikings can still get some going. Does Anderson realize? Take a shot. That's oh. not gonna count if it goes. And so an entertaining first half, Thomas. Both teams efficient on offense, and Pleasant Valley will take a 16-13 lead 
into the second quarter. You're listening to the Northern Section Division II Girls Championship game here on CIFNorthern.tv, your home for high school sports in the Northern Section. Looking for a place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFNorthern.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to the very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sport program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, full curriculum for students, and an opportunity to raise up $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. All right, 16-13 Pleasant Valley on top of Chico. Yeah, we did hear a little bit of the band for Chico High. You bring the band out and you get two games out of it, not a bad deal. And there's a travel. For every travel we've seen this weekend. If I had a dollar for every travel we've seen <laughs> this weekend, I think I'd be taking a private jet back to Sacramento. Here's Anderson, left-handed dribble. Motion offense now for the Vikings. Anderson gonna pull up from 20 feet, a little bit short, and good rebound there by McKinney. McKinney dribble drive up top, nobody picks her up. Throws it over to the right wing to Crisco. Left block, turnaround jumper is off the rim. And Denny Varley, head coach for Pleasant Valley, can't believe that call. And it'll send Moots back to the line. He didn't like the call at all. Moots was a more aggressive player and should have been called for the offensive foul. Misses the free throw. Foul was on Whitburn, her first. Second one's good. So Moot's got 11 points. And it's a 16-14 Vikings lead. Anderson, the crafty point guard, dribbles right. Oh, oh did everything but get the bucket. It was Nelson. Moot showing some ball handling skills. I've been impressed with both teams so far. Left block, jump ball, good defense. Yeah, nice tie up by Bonacorse for the, for the turnover by the Panthers. 16-14, Pleasant Valley on top with the lead. Just under seven minutes to go before half. Jeff Kurtz, our producer. Justin Barney, our videographer. Left wing is Bonacorsi, dribble drive, gets it back, puts it up off the glass, and good. Francesca Bonacorsi. Way to stay senior. with her. 18 14 now. Yeah, exactly. Never give up on the play. That's a perfect example of why. Drive baseline, put it up, block shot. Good defense there by the Vikings. Oh, Leland. Oh, how about <laughs> the extra pass? Nice break up there by 11 McKinney. I think Bonacorsi, if she just would have turned around and gone for the layup herself, she would have been better off. You can't blame her for being unselfish, but in that case, she probably should have taken the shot herself. A little LeBron in her. Full timeout called by Pleasant Valley head coach Denny Varley. We'll take a break as well. 6.15 left to go before half. The entertaining Division II section title game. 18-14 Pleasant Valley on top of Chico. KBCSports.com provides live audio coverage of the state regional basketball championships as well as the finals. March Madness comes to high school basketball in California on March 17th for the regional basketball championships. Four venues of coverage around the state. Then the following weekend on March 23rd and 24th, it's a state, it's a California state basketball championships. And you can catch all the action on kbcsports.com, your home for high school sports. kbcsports.com and Play On Sports Network showcase great high school games every week and now you can have access to our content by using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook, get the latest KBC and Play On news on Twitter, or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media sites, 
Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports. KBCSports.com and Play On Sports. To be an excellent opportunity for the Vikings here to get a good shot off and look for Anderson to get that outside jumper. She has it. You're going to take a WNBA three. No. And a loose ball foul. I believe it's going to be called on uh, Laney Nelson. Yeah, she just got her hands in a little too close to McKinney to draw that foul. Fourth team foul. First on McKinney. 6.08 to go, 18-14. You can tell both these schools well coached, well disciplined. And being crushed out in rivals, you know they see each other. Oh, look at that pass. Town. Oh, great pass. How about Moots with the setup, showing that she's an all around player, she just doesn't score. 18-16. Oh, look at Anderson dribble, drive, pull up, cash money. Oh, unbelievable. Great Both starter schools. step. Yeah. I, lo I love that starter step she did on the defender. Three ball. No. Good offensive rebound. Who else? It's Boots. 13 points. Glad you mentioned that they did play. Uh, Pleasant Valley won both meetings, 49-42 and then 49-47. So Another Chico travel. looking to finally get a victory over Pleasant Valley this year. They're 0-2, 20-18, 5-15 left to go. Before half, Holmes has it to Crisco. Crisco skip all the way across. Drive and dish to Kuntz, and Kuntz isn't gonna miss that, is she? 15 yep. points. For the senior. Simple basketball, penetrate the lane and pass it off to the to the outlet on, down low on the baseline and it perfectly done by the Panthers. 20 to 20. Here's Nedvid. And that's a reach up top. Let me reset your rosters for you. Anderson, Nedvid, Barber, Nelson, and Linton. No, no, correction, uh, Whitburn on the court for Pleasant Valley. 20-20, I'll give you Chico players here next time they have possession. And that's gonna be, oh, I'll get a dead ball. That's gonna be a foul on Grace Crisco. She's out there with Stephanie Ovitz and Desi McKinney. Of course, Jordan Moots. And she'll take her first breather, actually. She is replaced by Maury Thomas. And another sub gonna come in, and that's gonna be Jessica Seibel. Seibel will replace Nina, no, she will replace uh, Crisco. And Nina Holmes is the other player out there. 4.36 to go, all knotted up at 20. Nedvid at the line. First one is good. Uh, second shot's good, I should say. No, that was the, was that the, yeah. Am I the only one that's confused? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think Pleasant Valley the Vikings are running back down court. I think with all the substitutions threw everybody right, off. Right, right. They thought that they'd already, because <laughs> usually they do the sub after the first. Right. It's a one and one. So I think they thought that <laughs> it was just a one <laughs> shot. But either way, good stroke there by Nedvid. And now look, Pleasant Valley back on top, 22-20. Driving dish, right check. Thomas, all the way to the rack to tie it up. Oh, a strong move by Mari Thomas to take it to the goal. Nicely done, great execution. But as you said, they both are. That's a travel. That's just gas for my, uh, for my jet airliner. <laughs> 409 to go, all tied at 22. Good ball game here so far. A few more travels, I can get a ride down to San Diego on your jet. I like the aggressive move. Straight off the bench coming in with an impact is Seibel. Yeah, so it's great energy coming off the bench. Taking it strong to the goal and drawing the foul. 
It goes to my old theory. You come in off the bench, last thing you want to do is take a jumper. Get to the rack, get yourself an easy shot, get to the line. That's exactly what Seibel did. She didn't miss the first free throw, however. Four minutes exactly left before halftime. And that one hits the back of the rim, front of the rim, falls off. Galloway with a great rebound there. And here's Anderson. They're forcing her left, but she has no problem going left. Looks like she's comfortable with both hands. Jump stop into the cane. Anderson thought about the three, now take an eight-footer. No. Ooh, look at that rebound inside. Lundberg, the sophomore. First time we've seen her on the court, and she's all over the place. And Lundberg will go to the line. Just a sophomore. One of two sophomores on the roster. First three throws good, so Pleasant Valley doing a good job at the stripe. Sub into the game for Chico is Ovitz, and she replaces Holmes. Holmes quiet in her couple minutes on the court. I wonder how long Kunt Moots is going to be on the bench. Yeah, you got to expect her to come in maybe. Oh, she is back in. She did come back okay. in at the free throw. She's actually right in front of us. 24-22. Here's a three for the lead. No. And look at Anderson. 5-4 getting the rebound. Skip pass to Sanders. Travel. And she traveled. Correction, uh, Nedvid. 24-22. Now Chico on top. Here's Ovitz. Dribble drive, gets it to Seibel. Seibel to Moots. Moots, turnaround jumper, if that goes. But she draws the foul. She's got a, a whole bag of tricks in her arsenal. We've seen the drive, we've seen the post up. This time we see the fade away. Seen the outside shot. Yeah, and she kept Nevit off balance, and that what really drew the foul right there. As you said, you, you have to account for every move she has. But right there, she showed a little variation in Nedved. And she used her hands, got the foul, and now she's out of the game. As Lini, as Lini Nelson will come in for her. 3.09. Back rim. <coughs> However, it falls right to 23, Thomas. But good defense there. Anderson comes away with it. Pleasant Valley looking to go back on top. They currently trail by one, just under three to go. Three ball, no. Rebound, Moots. She's everywhere. <laughs> it's got to be her seventh rebound in the in the quarter, or in the half. Thomas, back to Moots. Goes left, dishes, three ball on the way. Yes, ma'am. From downtown, Stephanie Ovitz, the junior, 26-24. We go back and forth. Ovitz with five now. A good idea, driving dish, left block, and a push. Called against McClintock. First time we've seen her in the game. Tia Barber is the one who got fouled. Correction on my part. So Barber will go to the line for a one-in-one -one opportunity. Actually, Thomas got the foul. They're calling Thomas. That's her third. No, they're going to say actually. Are they going to say one on one, or is it two shot foul? Either way, the first one's good. Been impressed with both teams here early on. Thomas making their free throws. Yeah, good. Few turnovers. Very sound fundamentally, both squads. Moons gets the rebound. 26-25. Oh, great look. Yeah, maybe a little risky. Let, let her maybe a little too late. He got her underneath the basket when she finally realized she had an open uh, player side down court. She so let her a little sooner. That would have been an easy layup for Jessica. Vikings on top of the Panthers by one with the ball. So we approach the two-minute mark here before half. Game five of a six-game tilt. And here we go back the other way. It's Moontz. Oh, look at her get to the rim at will with the left hand. Crossover move, beautifully done. 
kept the defender flat for it, and that was no contest then because he blew right by her for the easy hoop. 18 points for Moons. Galloway with the bucket. Yeah, thank you. I was looking down at my score sheet. 28-27, back and forth we go. Don't want to sound like a broken record, but a very entertaining first half. Great defense there by, Lund uh, by excuse me, Barber to cause that turnover, that traveling call on the Panthers. Pollock replaces Westland. Anderson with the ball, brings it up, 125 to go. Pleasant Valley now trailing by one. Correction, they are up by one. Good move, good defense. Is that Moont? Yes. If he's gonna bring the ball up court, show some ball handling skills. Pull up for three. Nope. Maybe a heat check there. <laughs> Back rimmed it. One minute to go. Pleasant Valley, 28. Chico, 27. Left block, oh, look at that move. Good power move there by, by Barber. Yeah, it was a very good, just well, 33 seconds left, three ball off the side of the rim. Lundberg going all the way. Almost a three-point play. So Lundberg will go to the foul line here with 18.7. They call the foul on Pollock. That's her first. Free throw's good. For Lundberg. She's done a nice job, Ben, coming off the bench, giving some good, uh, good presence on the court. Yeah, it's four, four points off the bench. Shot clock turned off now. Pleasant Valley leads by three. Chico with the ball. They can hold for one. Here's Maddie Pollock. Feeds Moots inside. Turnaround jumpers. Good. Great play by Pollock. Waited exactly. Had patience with the clock uh, up above her and made a great pass to Moots. Anderson puts up a three, almost banks it in. What an entertaining first half. Division two, Northern Section Championship game. Pleasant Valley 31, Chico 30. Huh. We'll catch our breath, come back and uh, get you ready for the second half. You're listening to this, or you're watching on CIFNorthern.tv, your home for high school sports in the Northern Section. 316 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run this to the five, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow, he was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just, <laughs> holy cow! Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40. Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion, pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take, and there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sac Joaquin Section Champions 
the Granite Bay Grizzlies as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson, her serve is over, dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side, cut shot, kept alive, back in one by Cathedral, and this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide, and the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10, he bounces off a tackler at the 10, the five, touchdown Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter steps under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run, breaks through, four tackles, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40 yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20 yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, oh Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64 yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to already lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchin in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity. Look for Wallace. No, they go Becker. Hayashi then tap over in two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match. <laughs> Kathleen Wallace. No better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 
25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Sets the throw as Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin, and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hilmar, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44 to 6 is your score. And Helix is celebrating on the sideline. Oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended. Two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Clock rolling, third down and 15 for the Patriots. Dylan, he's got time, steps up. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. As I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Vernon, the lone receiver to the left. Troy Zien rolls right. Here we go. And he's going to be... Oh, he gets away, but can't get away from the second slew. Vacaville takes over on downs, and the crowd erupts. So does the sideline. Got to watch it. Got to watch the sideline yeah, here. Yeah, they Remember, really they were up 35-26. Two unanswered touchdowns. That's going to do it, folks. Your 2011 Division II Sac Joaquin section champions, the Vacaville Bulldogs, they went 39-35 in a Third and four from the 24-yard line. If this kick is made, I think I know who our player of the game is unless Escalon can pull a rabbit out of the hat. Snap down. Hole is good. Kick from Bancourt. It's through the uprights. It is good. Bancourt gets lifted up by his holder. Hilmar is up 20 to 17 with 19.5 seconds left. The fans across from us on the Hilmar side of things, waving their yellow and green pom-poms, or should I say gold and green pom-poms, reaching decibel levels unheard of right now. They're ecstatic, they're juiced. Their team has a three point lead and is on their way to winning this Sac Joaquin Section Division Four Championship against a hated rival, getting revenge from an earlier loss this year. Three-point game. Down to five seconds. Wilson from straight away fires a three. Go! And that will send it to overtime as Wilson drains the three at the buzzer. Straight on look, and he got it for that Woo! big bucket. Caroline Martin to serve. Can is third time the charm for Palo Alto. Martin over, dug by Irvin. Lauren, backside, Bedard got it. He's long, and that's the ball game. And Palo Alto comes from behind. They were down 13-8 in game five. They win it 17-15. Welcome back to Chico State University at Acker Gym alongside Thomas Conroy and Ben Schneider. Chico will have the ball. Trailing by one, moving now right to left in the visiting red uniforms with the yellow trim. And uh, so keys to the game, I'll give you a couple that I think. 
One is for Pleasant Valley, you gotta figure out a way to uh, stop Moots. She's got 20 of the 30 Chico points. I would say for Chico, f figure out a way to get the ball out of Anderson's hand. She's been great uh, creating. She's got 11 and a bunch of assists. Look at her, here she is, little dribble drive floater. I love it. The <laughs> she kind of led back towards the defense. They kind of forgot her for a moment. Great outlet pass to the top of the key, and then she just went right into the lane for the easy shot. I love it. I love it. And there's Moots trying to answer. No. And the Vikings have it with a three-point lead as we approach the seven minute. Look at the dribble behind the back. Handles. Yeah, great skills by Anderson. And there's a light over here that they got to call off. <laughs> I don't think the announcer knows it. They're filming something over in the, in the corner to our right. Like, uh... And they just point it the other direction. I think it's a live feed. And that's going to be ending real fast. We'll see if maybe our cameraman, Justin, can... Can you can he zoom in down there? Oh, no, they got it turned off. So... <laughs> Last night you had the uh, the the ice cup incident, and tonight I got nervous when the when the rest stopped and she went over towards that corner. We had an incident last night in our last game where some unruly fan threw a cup onto the floor. We had about a 20 minute delay. We're rocking and rolling here. Seven minutes to go to third. A fantastic ball game. Both both teams, both schools, really playing their hearts out here, and nothing easy. I mean, there's tough shots. Everything is earned. Both teams playing fantastic here. It's been the Anderson and Moot show, really. Yeah, Anderson has uh, had 11 at the half, while Moot's had 20. Well, that might be three shots. The foul is on uh, Seibel. Is it gonna be three? Three shots. So, Tabby, no, correction. Desi McKinney to the line, and I don't believe McKinney has scored yet today. No, no points. She misses the first free throw, but got two more. And that foul was on Nelson. That was uh, Laney's second foul of the game. Nobody really in trouble foul-wise. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Laney has, no, oh, she missed a second. Has two, but other than that, no starters has more than one foul. Just been a, a well-played game. Yeah, the only person really in serious foul trouble, Ben, is... Uh, is Maury Thomas with three. Well, look at look at Moots. Left-handed follow-up. She's got 22. One-point game. Vikings on top. Well, if he starts to open up with the left hand, we might as well all go home. Because he's going to be a force. I mean, you can use both hands in the paint. I mean, she, she can penetrate on her own, bring the ball up court. Sub for Chico it is Sanders. She comes in to replace McKinney. Left block and a hold. Good call. You can actually hear the slap from here. <laughs> About eight feet right of half court on the opposite side of the players. Oh, nice inbounds play. Oh, waved off. Legal, Legal screen. screen. And there might have been a reason why she got so open. 33-32, <laughs> 6.24 to go. Justin Barney is our videographer. Jeff Kurtz, our producer, alongside Thomas Conroy and Ben Schneider. D2, Northern Section Championship game. Both schools will advance to the state tournament. Winner, however, will host a game on Tuesday. Loser will have to go on the road. And that one's thrown away. Rare turnover. Had some early on, but... Both teams from about the midway through the first to about now have just been playing very clean basketball. Yeah, Holmes right there tried to lead over it, but a little too much and caused a turnover. Anderson driving dish. Feed down low, slips. That would have been a good time maybe to call a timeout. Chico has it and trailing by one. That one's intercepted and Anderson comes away with it. Well, had she been able to pass that, they would have had numbers back the other way. Moots a little too aggressive there, trying to do a little over half court pass down court to, to Ovitz. And again, 
simply uh, telegraphed it too much, allowed the defense to come over, break it up easily. Sub for Pleasant Valley. Lundberg will replace Nedvid. 5.45 to go, Anderson left-handed dribble. She's a quick one, isn't she? Mm. Passes it off, how about this scoop shot to the hoop and in. Great dish and Nelson took it right to the goal. Clear opening for her, that was her first bucket. Nelson's first basket of the game. Three ball, well, not even close. Yeah, this eyeball way off on the three attempt. You look at the Chico scoring, they got 22 from Moots and five from Ovitz. That's 27 of their 32. Figure out maybe who the third scores. Good idea, but that's that travel we've been talking about. Yeah, Barbara trying to plead her case, but the referee will have nothing to do with it. Another traveling call. Pleasant Valley on top, 35-32. And you look at uh, the scoring, a little bit way more distributed for Chico. All five players on the court right now have scored at least a bucket. Here's a three. Ooh, rattles out. Look at Moots with the offensive rebound. Turnaround jumper off the bank. Everything's going for the senior. It went over three defenders to get that rebound and went up hard for her 24th point on the evening. I think if Chico wins, we won't have too hard a time finding a player of the game. But look at this low post move. Power. Galloway. The junior, Callaway. Here's Moons, driving dish, three ball. That one rims out, another offensive rebound, scoop shot up and in, Nina Holmes. Her first basket was a beauty, reverse it underneath the glass. Look at Anderson, dribble drive, pull up, yes ma'am. Back she, and forth we go. She answered the call right there, nice jumper by Tabby Anderson. 15 for Anderson. 39-36, here about a three to tie. Nope, good box out, good rebound, get it to Anderson. And a reach in the backcourt, 80 feet away from the hoop. Yeah, Holmes thought she had a good chance to take the ball away from Anderson, but I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have done that. She's too good of a ball handler. She'll make you foul her, and that's exactly what happened to Holmes. And she picks up her third foul. And a full timeout for head coach Denny Varley and Pleasant Valley, we'll take a break in the action. 3.55 to go, don't go anywhere folks, we got a good one brewing here. Pleasant Valley 39, Chico 36. You need a highlight video for your athlete working to earn that four year scholarship? Then you wanna contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, we'll give your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges, and send just email coaches the link to your own personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. The largest lead of the game, I think, was five for Pleasant Valley. That's how close and how back and forth we've been. Top of the key, Anderson. Look at this. Quick, oh, offensive rebound's good. Look, Anderson, the Anderson draws so much attention that the defenders are getting off of their girls to get on Anderson, and just like the case there, a uh, soft miss off the, off the rim will be an easy opportunity because Anderson just attracts so much attention. Yeah, watch it now if you're the Panthers. Pleasant Valley looks like they could take over the tempo of this game rather easily. And they match their largest lead of five. Send the Seibel. Up top to Thomas. And correction to Lundberg. Lundberg to Anderson. Scoop shot left hand. Oh. <laughs> She's fun to watch. Six points in the quarter, and I love that move. Great ball movement. Lundberg gave it to Tabby Anderson, who moved right to the right to the heart of the lane and high off glass to make it a 43-36 game. Good timeout there too by Chris Audrey. Don't want to get this one. Don't want to let this one get a, uh, away from you if you're Chico. 2.58 to go. Pleasant Valley has their largest lead of the game. They lead 43 to 36. You're listening, or you're watching, I should say, on CIFNorthern.tv, the Northern Section Division II 
championship game on your home for high school sports in the northern section. Catch the best northern section basketball on CIFnorthern.tv. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes. Plus, check out the game highlights, player interviews, and more. Or you can order a DVD or a Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for basketball in the northern section, CIFnorthern.tv. Now stay tuned for the CIF Northern.tv postgame show where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIF Northern.tv. Inadvertent horn there. But we're rocking and rolling. Chico needs a bucket here. Let's see what they do out of the timeout. Usually this is where your coach draws up a play that has been very successful for you throughout the year to try to get a bucket, but they throw it away. Yeah, pass a little short, skipped right through the hands of Moods one of the few times. She couldn't cut, kind of pick up that ball from the errant pass. I like the, the bringing out the defender of the almost to half court to get Anderson. Get the ball out of Anderson's hand. It's a foul, it's gonna be on Moots. Yeah, only her second foul, no big deal there. She had to defend that shot. Don't make it an easy basket for Nelson, who obviously beat her to the ball for the second chance, but make her earn her two points. Don't give up anything easy. Nelson's got a pretty stroke, doesn't she? 44-36, largest lead for the Vikings is eight. Anderson spins, delivers, front rim, but an offensive rebound then lost. Here comes Chico back the other way, one on one. Little stutters, that's gonna be a travel, unfortunately. Good move. Chico crowd doesn't like it, but that was the right call. Yeah, Nina Holmes, she, she, she looked up in the last second, saw the defender was in her way, tried to inadvertently step away from her, took the extra step. Anderson fakes it, driving dish, right wing. Back to Anderson, thought about the three. She'll can settle the offense, nice entry pass inside, turnaround jumper is good. What was so perfect about that pass, it allowed Galloway to simply turn and shoot. She didn't have to reach for it high. She didn't reach for a low. Great pass, great execution. Galloway's now got 11. So two players, Galloway and Anderson, 28 of the 46. And a steal by Galloway. Watch out, they're on a 9-0 oh, run go. and they're yeah. smoking it. Nope. Offensive rebound, nope. It's re Chico's kind of out of sorts here. They got to get it in her hands. Moots <laughs> misses it, gets it back, traveled, got away with it. Turnaround jumper, good. What I liked about that play, Moots went to her favorite spot on the floor. She knew she could make a jumper from there. She was underneath the basket, stepped back two steps, and made a great shot. 20 second timeout called by Chico. 46 38. Moots has a game high 26. Second time in the game where she has literally stopped a run by the Vikings. And if you remember in the second quarter, they had an 11-0 run and she, take, she took a jumper and to, to stop that momentum. And right there, a 9-0 run by the Vikings was stopped by Moots, simply just not being denied to put a ball in the basket. Great leadership by the senior. Two timeouts left, let me give you a reset. So 121 left to go into third. Pleasant Valley 46, Chico 38. Chico has two timeouts left, Pleasant Valley three. Possession arrow is in the favor of Pleasant Valley. And I'd pick up Anderson a little, maybe Look. even send a double team out to try to get the ball out of her hands. And you gotta, given Galloway that left elbow jumper, I would put a hand in her face here. That's a shot she can easily make. Lundberg, another quality minutes coming off the bench. Talented sophomore, we're gonna hear a lot from her up here in the Northern section in the coming years. Turn on jumper, I couldn't see who it was. I had the ref right in front of me. Tabby Anderson. <laughs> who else? <laughs> Fourth She's, bucket in the quarter, Ben. She got 19, eight points here in the quarter. Feed it down low, good double team. 
It was a long shot, air ball. And a 10 point lead. About a 14 second differential shot clock, game clock, shot clock at 20. Have Anderson, the, calm, cool, collective up top. Have the first time Moots forced a shot from the corner. Not the most ideal shot when you're down. Here's Galloway, Anderson, heat check. Why not? Yes, ma'am. Ring it up. 22 points. Now she's just four away from uh, Moot. How about this three for the answer? Yes, sir. A three ball for the answer from Maury Thomas. Her three. second Does three Anderson of the game. It? Good if it goes. Oh! oh! A triple at the end for Lindsay Lundberg, the sophomore, the youngster. That gives her seven on the night. So Anderson, and then for Chico, it was Thomas, and then Lundberg. We had three threes within about 10 seconds. Uh, about 15 seconds. And that one kills the Panthers because they, had, they, they, they felt good about themselves with Thomas's three. And then Lumber comes right back and does ups the lead to 13. How about Anderson's awareness to throw it up too to mm -hmm. Lundberg so she could get the three? Yeah, I love Lundberg. Does her energy coming off the bench. She really made a presence of herself. She's done an excellent job here uh, coming off the bench and really giving them that life. And boy, that three, that would be, that'd be none bigger shot in, in her career than right there, right now. Just a sophomore. So let's gonna reset the lineup for you here as we get ready for the fourth for Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley is going to go with Jessica Galloway, Tabby Anderson, Lindsay Lundberg, Laney Nelson, and Michelle Meter, the senior. 54 41. <laughs> Look at Anderson. Woo! Nelly. High off glass. That's a window cleaner. And she almost broke the ankle of the defender, too, getting to the rim. <laughs> 24 points for the senior. And did you step over the line? Yes, you did. Just uh, unforced air there by Chico. Kind of coming a little bit unraveled here. Yeah. You gotta get somebody else besides Moons to step up, hit some shots. Anderson driving dish, left elbow jumper, in and out. Gonna foul in the backcourt. So for Chico, Jordan Moots. Nina Holmes, Maury Thomas, Stephanie Ovitz, and Desi McKinney. Here's Thomas, top to Holmes, kick ball. Tebby Anderson trying to read the lane, kicked it. Panthers going a little bit toward the lineup as uh, Kelsey Hughes comes in the game, the junior. For the first time we've seen her on the court. A little zone defense here, gonna make Chico make some outside shots, I like the call. They haven't really shown that they can make outside shots on a consistent basis, so why not put them in a zone? Yeah. Their inside play's been pretty good. Kenny struggling and right there a shot a little off target. Anderson dribble drive, almost lost it. Ooh, we can hear that slap. Moots thought she had an all ball, but I think the more with the body than the, than the actual block attempt was where the foul was drawn. And Nelson will go to the line, the junior. Moots now with three fouls. Four points on the night for Nelson. Sub in for Chico is Seibel. She will replace uh, McKinney. Second one's good, 58-41. So for three quarters, this was a close game. Maybe, uh, about maybe two and a half. Middle of the third is when Pleasant Valley went on their run. First a 9-0 run. Three ball, this could help. Nothing but ground. 
I think it's too I'm early to sure go for the, threes. Yeah. I agree. You can still stay in your offense and, and, and chip away. You just got to get back on defense, make a couple of stops. Doesn't matter if you hit the threes if you're not going to stop them on the other end of the court. Just a third foul on the Vikings, too. We got a sub coming in for Pleasant Valley. It's going to be Francisca Bonacorsi. She will replace Lindsay Lundberg. Lundberg, a couple big shots there in the quarter. Yeah, great play by Lundberg. I'm going to telegraph that pass. Everyone in the gym knew where she was going. 6.30 to go. Vikings on top by 17. Holmes now going to try her luck with uh, Anderson. You see why Pleasant Valley 24 and 2 on the year. No, oh, good pass. Uh, nice save. Maybe a little bit too much. Good drive. And Holmes will go to the line. 6.06 to go. Just couldn't get the roll. Good, I like the look. I like the move. They moved the ball back out after that errant pass by Moots. But the nice save there by Seibel. And then they worked it around the Holmes. And just could not get the, get the shot to go for them. No, that free throw is way off. Sub into the game for Chico is Grace Crisco. She replaces Seibel. And look at the hand that... Nelson gets as she comes out. Yeah, but she picked up her fourth foul. We'll see if that comes into play here in the fourth quarter. Both free throws missed. Six minutes to go. Pleasant Valley six minutes away from a Division II section title. Anderson goes left. Loses the handle. Goes over to Bonacorsi, good feed inside. And Galloway going up strong, draws the contact. Now that's Boots' fourth foul. And if she has to leave the court, it's going to be a tough row of hole for the Panthers without their leading scorer there. Seven fouls on Chico as well. If I was coach... Audrey, I would, I would move her away from the basket to save her if you're going to keep her on the court. Galloway now with 11. Put in Thomas or one of your other taller players to play down low. Moon's the rebound off the Galloway miss. Four on three. Moon's going to take it all the way. This time it comes up a little bit short. It will remain Chico ball, however. 5.34 to go and 18 points. Pleasant Valley lead. Remember, it's a one-point game at half. It's a third quarter dominated by the Vikings. Three ball, nope. And it's bringing it up smartly, taking all the time she needs. They have the lead, they have the ball, make the defense kind of come out and, and play you. Nedvid to Anderson, Bonacorsi, nope. Rebound Moont, three on one, three on two. And yeah, just take it to the rack, there you go. Nobody's going to stop the ball. Take it to the rack, young lady. She had the numbers, and the defense were not going to challenge her. They were playing off. They expected her to pass the ball. She did this smart move. Take it all the way and make them, make them stop you. Mm. Well, this whole team has collectively just uh, gone uh, cold. Uh, no, I agree. Maybe, and fatigue might be a factor because they're not even coming close on, on even free throws. Let's see if Moon, she's going to make this one, though. Watch. Nope. Five minutes to go. 18 point lead for Pleasant Valley as Chico's missed her last five free throws, Thomas. Yeah, it's Good inside troubling. position. You get the ball that deep, you can't, you, if you're Chico, you cannot allow Galloway to get the ball that deep. All she has to do is turn around and it's a layup drill. And Moots can't be aggressive with the four fouls. 20 point lead. Good hard drive there by Crisco. And you're the Panthers, you're like, how did this happen? We had a tight game. Back and forth action, and all of a sudden now, it has just gotten out of control with the hot hand of the Vikings. Just not, not as much depth. 
Well, they played them close both times, 49-42 and 49-47. That's six in a row, though, missed at the line. See if the subs can make a difference. Sanders and Ovitz into the game, replacing Thomas and Hughes. 20 point leads, that was that eight in a row missed, seven in a row. I think seven missed free throws in a row. You mean you make those, you're down 13. Even if you make half of them. That's a silly foul. That's gonna send Moots to the line. Final course, he was in a tough position right there. She got tied up with, uh, with Moots and I don't think she could have, she could afford not to foul her. It was just an awkward position. That's, that's her third. Galloway's gonna come out. Listen to this ovation. Thirty-five years as a head coach at Pleasant Valley for Coach Denny Varley. Twenty-five of them with the boys. This is tenth year coaching the girls. His second stint. Just can't get rid of the guy. And why would you want to? That one's short. Finally, they broke the Schneid by making a field a free throw. You know, work some clock here if you're Pleasant Valley. Yeah, Anderson's been doing it the last four possessions. We got a nightcap coming up. D2 boys, Chico versus Shasta. Chico 22 and three, Shasta 17 and nine. Good pass. Look at him fight to the end. Nice outlet. Chico's got numbers if they can hurry, but Anderson, oh. she stepped out of bounds. Oh, double dribble. It's yeah. used both hands on the dribble. That was a good call by the ref. 19 point lead is... Chico gonna call a timeout. We'll take a break as well. 3.58 to go. Pleasant Valley 61, Chico 42. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our in-demand section. And you can buy a DVD or a Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFNorthern.tv. Simply Click on Buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIF Northern.TV. Now if you're looking for a place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community, then you want to advertise on CIF Northern.TV. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to the very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. And for the Panthers right now, they gotta get back into this game. And I think unfortunately with 3.58 to go, they're gonna have to start heaving some threes here and get some good shots. Maybe you bring in Pollock who had a good couple of good outside shots. M Maury Thomas who also was an excellent three point shooter. She's hit two on the evening. Skip pass. Chico just, they don't, just don't look very comfortable out there anymore. All alone on the phone. A deuce from Lundberg. Oh, good look at this pass ahead. Good pass. Great outlet, man. That was Holmes. a bullet pass. Had a tight window to get it through, too. Yeah. And Overich was ready for it and went hard into glass to draw the foul on Whitburn. I think they're gonna clear the bench a little bit. Anderson's already out. Classy thing to do. So here are your subs. Jess Linton and Haley Lanham in the game for the first time. Ovitz, second free throw is good. 63-42. And a foul. From behind, it looked like McKinney would pick it up. You talk about cold streak. The Panthers have scored only two points in the quarter and both of them have come from the charity stripe. 
And they didn't exactly light up the scoreboard in the third either. No, they had a... Uh, they only score what? They scored They scored 11 in the quarter. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, but... But they were outscored by 13. Well, 13 and 11, that's not too bad. Oh, excuse me. No, that can't be right. No, I'm wrong. 23 to 11. 23, yeah. yeah. Pleasant Valley was just on fire there in the third quarter. Free throw's good. 65-43. It's all but academic, folks. A chance for some players who don't usually play to get in, which is nice. Three ball on the way. Looks good. Is off the back of the iron. And now it's a foul machine. A lot of fouls going on out there now. Yeah, it might be time to take out Moots and this give her a applause for the, the game she's played here this evening. And kind of just run out the clock and let others on, on the squad play, get a few extra minutes. Because the senior has done an excellent job. And she misses the first free throw. She had 20 at half, Ed six and a third, and only one, uh, one free throw here in the, in the fourth. Makes a second for 28. And a, yeah, just a lot of fouls here. Yeah. Both teams are, after the next foul, both teams will be in the double bonus. Three minutes to go, it's a 21 point Vikings lead. Front end of the one on one is up in the air and good. Three, three points from Linton there. Free throws off. Loose scramble for it. They'll call a hold. And yeah, I think on Whitburn. A little sloppy play here after the extremely tight play by both teams through the about three, three and a half quarters. I mean, it's in about three quarters. Moots misses. Yeah, back rimming it. That's a sign of fatigue. You're really trying to force your shot, trying to get a little higher arc there, and you're going to back rim it each time. Catherine Westland into the game for Nina Holmes. Second free throw is good, gives Moots 29. Ball out of bounds. Yeah, Westland a little sloppy with the ball. That happens when you don't play a lot. Both teams now in the double bonus. Three on the way. Nope. Offensive rebound, kick it back out. Another three. Oh, that one halfway home comes out. Third opportunities up and in. First Before field goal. Great thing them, they get their first field goal. Ooh. Oh, she hit her head hard. Lundberg, but she gets back up. That is one tough sophomore. She's going to be a definite leader. You can just sense it next year on this team. She's got all the aspects. She knows exactly what she wants to do with the basketball. She goes strong to the goal. She can hit the outside. She showed her with that, that three at the end of the third quarter. She's going to be a talented player for this team next year. She's got double figures now, 10. Another well, sub in for Chico is Maddie Pollock. She replaces uh, Sanders. Free throw good. Yeah, I mean, it's no surprise why this Pleasant Valley team is going to be now 25-2. and two. And they're going to be a team to reckon with in the state tournament. They have approach great, the two-minute mark. They have great patience, and, and, and they'll wait teams out, as they did here tonight. And once they get on that run, they're awfully hard to stop. So, yeah, they definitely have a chance come state. Good pass ahead. A little bit too much, maybe. Under two to go. Yeah. 
Shasta crowd getting filing in here for the nightcap. Chico Boy's going to try to get at least one victory for the school. Offensive rebound, no. 130 to go. Teams have backed off here in the last minute. Now Lombok showing her ball handling skills. Possibly uh, applying for that job as Tabby Anderson will be graduating. No, oh, turn around, it just hangs on the front of the rim for a little bit. Moots might come up, watch out from behind. Nice steal from behind there by Barker. Under a minute to go. So Pleasant Valley is going to win the section title. They'll have a home game on Tuesday in the opening round of the state tournament. Refs may be swallowing the whistle here a little bit in the closing <laughs> minutes, which we don't have a problem with. No. I'm sure the crowd doesn't either. Moon's another rebound. That's got to be at least a double-double for her. And she's looking to go coast to coast. She's tired. Yeah. You can tell. Ooh. A couple of players going off on each other, going for a loose ball. Look like Whitburn and... I think that was Thomas. They're both okay as they get up. Yeah, it was Thomas. Chico, maybe one more shot here. Moons fitting oh. and one. That'll get her 30 plus. Yeah, she lost the handle of the ball, then regained it, and then just turned around and fired up a jumper. I mean, that's confidence right there. Great performance by the senior in the losing effort. Offensive rebound up, and that's going to do it. So congratulations to Pleasant Valley. They defeat Chico 68-49 to win the Division II Northern Section title. We'll come back with our player of the game interview following these words on CIFNorthern.tv, your home for high school sports in the northern section. Uh, once again, your final score, Pleasant Valley 68, Chico 49. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass, looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs. And Jordan Lertik will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attacked there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Ah, winner, oh. it's all over the, over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with a jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way. And he's at the 10-5, touchdown! 
Patrick Zeller. Got, he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines. And he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown. Broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown Foothill. Like you said earlier, it's 6-2 body frame, and can probably, in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last Bullard minute. Bullard trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he, um, he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him, Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory territory, the 25, the 20. The 10, the 5, touchdown Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft. So we're wrapping things up here. Pleasant Valley wins over... Chico, 68 to 47. I'm here with our player of the game, Tabby Anderson. 24 points. First off, congratulations. Thank you so much. And um, do, well, you're five foot four. Uh, I, I love your court, court demeanor out there. Do you play the game with a chip on your shoulder a little um, bit, just because you kind of because of your height maybe, and you just kind of have to scratch and claw for everything? Yeah, it's like since I'm short, I have to um, like take the game in a different perspective and try to go for like the shots that are easy for me because I can't go down low, right. but when I go for layups, I go up strong. You use your left hand pretty well. How long have you, have you always, I mean, is this something that you've developed late or is this something that you've always been comfortable doing? Um, Seems I, like you would go even more, like even if you had the choice, you'd go left. Well, this is my first year playing point guard. So when I, I dribble right a lot, but when people start picking up on that, I started to um, like, pick up on my left hand because I was using that more because they were guarding my left, my right. Okay. So I kind of just picked so that up on the way. More by default. Excellent. Right. You guys beat uh, Chico twice this year. Always hard to beat a team three times in one year. Right. And the other ones were a little bit closer, 49-42, 49-47. What do you think the difference was in this one tonight? Um, last time, like the other times were, <laughs> I think we, were, we still didn't know what they were going to do. Like we thought we did, but I don't think like we were like ready for it. But our third time around, I think we were super like we were really ready for it, and we came out really strong and like calmer than we were before. Uh, it was pretty close for about two and a half quarters. Yeah. What was the difference about midway through the third? You guys just started to pull away. What, what do you think was the difference there in the third? The second quarter, we nobody was scoring. We like nobody like none of our um, teammates were just like going towards the basket, and everybody on Chico, they kept going like towards the basket, and they kept you know drawing all the fouls and everything. So when we went up for a halftime, we came back like third quarter and we had, like we, everybody had to score. And that's when we pulled away. Yeah, you got great uh, contributions from Galloway and Lundberg. Can you talk about uh, the play of those two girls tonight? Excuse me? They, uh, from Galloway and Lundberg. Oh. They, they played well, they, they played, played great. They played really well, yeah. I, I think everybody on our team, everybody plays well, but there, I don't think there's any like stars on our team, but when everybody needs to pick it up, everybody picks up. But 
Like, we have really good players on this team. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, what's it like playing for Coach Varley? He's a legend. I know he coached the boys team for 25 years. Uh, this is his second stint with the girls coach. What's it like playing for him? Seems like seems like a great coach. Has you guys all in order and, and everything else uh, well disciplined. What, what's it like playing for a guy like that? Varley is honestly the best coach. He's He knows when to be like strict and everything, but he's a sweetheart. I love him to death. Our whole team loves him. We, I think he's just really smart where I don't second guess like anything he, uh, he says to me. So he's a great coach. What are your expectations now as you head into the state tournament? Ooh, um, I feel like we're gonna do good, but last year uh, we went down like south and we were- You won the section last year too, right? Right, we, yeah. didn't, we weren't expecting anything, but we have a home court. I think Tuesday, so I think we'll be ready. So back-to-back -back championships for Pleasant Valley, the Vikings. Uh, what, what do you guys do tonight for a nightcap? How do you celebrate? Um, I don't know. It's a Saturday night. We'll just probably have like a team party. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're just all going to be excited. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Great game. 24 points for our player of the game, Tabby Anderson. Five foot four point guard. She plays like she's about six five, though. <laughs> That's for sure. Thanks. We're gonna. Be right back to wrap things up right after these words. <laughs> awesome. Thank Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs and Jordan Lertique will take that knee and the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity, and they've really just turned the table. Great interview there with our player of the game, Tabby Anderson. 24 points as Pleasant Valley wins for the second straight year. The northern section. Division two championship, they will host a playoff game on Tuesday. So that's gonna wrap it up. Our final score was Pleasant Valley 68, Chico 47. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've had five games today, why not make it six? Chico boys playing the Shasta for the D2 boys championship. That's coming up next on CIFNorthern.tv. For our producer, Jeff Kurtz, our videographer, Justin Barney, for my color commentator, Thomas Conroy, I am Ben Schneider saying so long until we meet again here in a few minutes for the D2 Boys Championship game, the nightcap. Congratulations to Pleasant Valley, your 2012 Division II North, Northern Section Champions.